In history, pangolin was ever rather common in China, but the animal become less and less, hardly to be found in the field. Population number has been dramatically declined, close to the brink of extinction. Pangolins are one of the, the, the biggest victims of the illegal trade in Asia, with the animals being collected from throughout their range, largely to meet demand in China. Pangolins are harvested from throughout their entire range in Southeast Asia, and as populations here are declining, we're starting to see an increase in, in trade of pangolins from Africa. The Pangolin Specialist Group was established in 2012 and it's one of over 120 IUCN Species Survival Commission groups and we exist as a quorum of expertise on pangolin conservation. This conference is fundamental to pangolin conservation because it's the first time ever that conservationists have got together to address issues facing pangolins both in Africa and in Asia. This conference is an excellent opportunity for really making a change for pangolins. We've got experts from around the world from all different fields that are looking at the pangolin crisis from the ecology angle, from the captive husbandry angle, from enforcement, trade monitoring, all of these people coming together, putting our heads together and coming up with some, some action points and a real plan that we can take forward to, to start tackling the trade. My name is Nick Chunin Sang. I have studied Chinese pangolin in eastern Taiwan. I used radio tracking to locate their burrows. I also determine the habitat use. There are several topics we are working on, including home range, food habits, social structure, and the mating system. We also analyze the habitat preference. Recently, we started to use camera trap to monitor their breeding behaviors such as a nursing period and survival rate of their offspring. I hope this data can provide useful reference to save their future. Nama saya Elisa Panjang, uh, saya berasal daripada Sandakan Sabah Malaysia. Saya telah uh, mengkaji tenggiling sejak daripada tahun 2011 dan juga digu makumat ini boleh digunakan Sekarang saya sedang um, memeriksa perangkap kamera. Uh, biasanya saya akan menukar bateri dan kemudian um, tukar dia punya SD card dan ke pusat kajian dan saya akan analisis lah gambar-gambar ini. My name is Lucy Basmi Suan. Currently, we are developing monitoring protocol and conducting national pangolin survey. The pangolin monitoring protocol will standardize and bring consistency to the pangolin survey meters. We're at the National Zoological Gardens Biobank in Pretoria and uh, we're working in collaboration with the Chinese custom officials, particularly in Hong Kong, that received a large shipment of African pangolin scales and as part of the chain of custody process here at the biobank we are in the process of determining the species of African pangolin and in so doing try and estimate where the uh, poaching syndicates are operating. I am Dorujai Shuel. I lead a team of researchers that are working on various aspects of pangolin trade. And the essence of this is when we know the volume of animals that is being taken from the wild, we have an insight into the volume that is being taken off the populations in the wild. 
Well, right now, the pangolin is considered the most poached mammal on the planet, and the statistics all around Africa are just on the increase every day. Uh, we've never seen so many pangolins being poached. So this is a little boy pangolin and his name is Bambanani. Bambanani was a victim of the illegal wildlife trade. His mother was poached on a Thursday evening and was taken to the police station where she remained in, the, in a cage in the police station. And when the police came in in the morning, Bambanani had been born. And that's when we were called in to obviously assist with the care of both mother and baby. And the, his mum has subsequently been released back into the wild. So she will be given a second chance. Hello, my name is Thai Van Nguyen. Uh, we've been released successfully 75 pangolin back to the wild. We also open Carnival and Pangolin Education Center for the public to develop the program with some of the school. We release the Sanda Pangolin with radio tracking to understand more about the survival rates. Together we improve understand on ecology to evaluate the, our success on red reputation and uh, for us to be able to manage white population more effectively. Tao We're fortunate in Hong Kong to still have wild Chinese pangolins and I'm actually sitting next to the fresh burrow of a Chinese pangolin. The conservation and education team are carrying out several programs that are aimed at uh, supporting the conservation work of uh, pangolins in this region. Our education activities also help to raise the awareness amongst school children and visitors to the centre to educate several thousand people about pangolins and the need to uh, conserve this important species. I'm Ambika Khatiora. I work for Chinese pangolin, the critically endangered species. I work with local communities, engaging them for Chinese pangolin conservation and collecting scientific information like where pangolins live, how they behave in nature and working to prevent extinction of these species. We for project implementation, local communities were often unaware that the Chinese pangolin is critically endangered. Villages who came across pangolins by chance were more likely to kill it to have its meat as delicacy and the scales to sell. I'm Dr. Chong Julian and this is Muhammad Hafiz Sulaiman from University of Malaysia Tengano. We are working on the Sunda pangolin in Peninsula Malaysia. We are also going around to schools so that the younger generation are more aware about what is actually going on with the Sunda pangolin in Malaysia. My name is Louise Fletcher. I've been working on the conservation of Sunda pangolin for the past three years. I'm currently working with Aiken Day Press a small organisation who is passionate about enhancing environmental literacy. I was the illustrator of a book, A Pangolin Tale, which is a playful but ecologically sound story teaching children about the animal. I'm here training the nine fellows of the Mentor Pop Fellowship, and to me these guys represent the future of pangolin conservation. It's so exciting to see these young conservationists really take heart in this issue and really build the capacity of Central African conservation. Pop Fellowship Program is building capacity of emerging professionals in, from Asia and Central Africa to address threats to pangolins in Central Africa. The 15-month program is based in Cameroon, which is a critical state in the trade route between uh, Africa and Asia in pangolins. The nine fellows in the program are addressing issues like demand reduction, uh, field assessment, and law enforcement. These are threats, these are issues that are affecting pangolins in Central Africa. My name is 
Carly Waterman and I'm the Programme Officer and Red List Coordinator for the Pangolin Specialist Group. My role in the group is to update the Pangolin Red List assessments, to produce information on pangolin status and trade to decision makers such as party societies, provide support for the development of global and national pangolin conservation action plans and finally to help support the members and the co-chairs to advance the group's mission. Hi, my name is Paul Dearnellis. Uh, I work on illegal wildlife trade issues. With regards to pangolins, one of the main focuses we're supporting in Cameroon, where we have big concerns that the three species of pangolin there are increasingly threatened by hunting, poaching and trade, and helping law enforcement agents track down those who might be um, illegally poaching or trading species. I'm Jeff Flocken, and I'm an IUCN Pangolin Specialist Group member. The forums that we've been working in include the first ever international gathering of 29 pangolin range countries that came together in Vietnam, hosted by the U.S. government, and together worked to figure out what needs to be done to save the species. Mm -hmm.